everyone's going to be acting in theatre. Ferdinand. Ferdinand the Bull is a story I have often heard referenced in other movies, but never knew the actual story. Based on a book released in 1936, this is the second time this story has been put to animation as far as I'm aware, the first being a Disney Silly Symphony short released in 1938, just two years after the book was released. Going into this movie blind, I wasn't expecting much and yeah, I was right. Ferdinand is a young bull who escapes from a training camp in rural Spain after his father never returns from a showdown with a matador. Adopted by a girl who lives on a farm, Ferdinand's peaceful existence comes crashing down when the authorities return him to his former captors. With help from a wise cracking goat and three hedgehogs, the giant but gentle bovine must find a way to break free before he squares off against El Primero, the famous bullfighter who never loses. Though I haven't read the book, I watched The Silly Symphony after seeing this movie and have to admit, the short managed to tell the message better in 7 minutes than the movie did in 90, mostly due to needlessly stretching out the story with dance battles and poorly paced character development and cowardly cop-outs. Blue Sky hasn't really sat well with me for a few years since it tends to rely too heavily on sequels, case in point, the Ice Age franchise. Rio also got a pretty pointless sequel, so it was refreshing to see something original from the studio. I use the word original in its loosest sense though, since Ferdinand doesn't do anything new. This isn't a bad thing really, but it hits all the right notes of a feel-good family film, following the story of a bull who would rather smell flowers than fight. One thing I will say I loved about this film was Ferdinand's dad. Instead of making Ferdinand feel like he needed to change to fit the world, his dad shows support and understanding to his son. How refreshing is that to see in a parent of figure in a kids movie? Too often, parents are shown as overprotective, overbearing, annoying or even neglectful. This dad is quite possibly one of the best father figures I've seen in animation for a while. Shame he's barely on screen for more than a few minutes. Ferdinand is a pacifist who is portrayed as clumsy and naive, but never dumb. Being a huge bull, he seems almost monstrous to some, and built for fighting. But no matter what people do or say, he sticks to his morals and refuses to fight without a justified reason. It's an admirable story, but it's been told before, countless times, and countless times better. Sometimes the bravest thing you can do is to choose not to fight. This would have been a great lesson if Ferdinand wasn't voiced by professional wrestler John Cena. Great casting there, guys. As strong as the moral of the story is, the rest of the movie drags and has an awkward rhythm, pointless and annoying horses and twerking hedgehogs. All six of these characters are here to serve as plot devices in the movie and nothing more. He also has a Highland cow friend named Angus, because of course he's named Angus. Nationalities are character traits and therefore funny, right? But if he's voiced by an actual Scot like David Tennant, it gets a free pass, I guess. As silly and predictable as this movie is, I enjoyed the stylized look it had with the backgrounds and details like the carvings and the shapes of the trees, or the way the hills mirror the shape of Ferdinand himself, or how colourful Nina's farm is. It surprised me with how heartfelt it was during the first third, but then it slipped into the inevitable contemporary slang that most talking animal movies have these days. It won't become a timeless classic, and I probably won't watch it again, but it's pretty harmless and even clever in parts of the final act. Give it a watch and make up your own mind on whether this gets a pass or is complete bull. <laughs> I'm Mad Munchkin, stay creative.